the entire planet, even the North Pole. From the Zimmer Radio World Headquarters in the heart of the Midwest, this is the Gary Nolan Show. Now, here's your proud card-carrying member of the Libertarian Party, Gary Nolan. Hey, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be with you. It is seven minutes after the hour. Jennifer Bukowski, attorney at law, joins us this morning. Good morning, Glory. You know... Plagiarism just doesn't benefit yeah, you at all. Line, isn't it? Yes, it's plagiarism, <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't. It, it, it's, it doesn't it's, do you. It's flattery. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, Gary. Come on. <laughs> well, good morning. Glad to have you with us. Uh, you uh, you wrote a piece, a uh, little response about taxes in the local newspaper. I did. Yes, um, they want more money, more power, and uh, who are they? This time it's the Boone County um, commissioners are the biggest contributors to the sales tax campaign, which isn't a surprise to me because that's more money that they get under their control. So, of course, they want that tax to go through. The interesting thing is they don't have a super dedicated purpose for this money. It's just more slush fund money to use for extra projects to grow the government more, much like the child mental health tax that they passed a couple of years ago. They didn't have a dedicated purpose for that, so everyone's uh, putting in proposals that they their special projects should get that money, but they just put these names on things that they think will fly with the voters so that they can grow the government and have more money and more power, when in reality they have all kinds of reserve funds, um, millions and mil- tens of millions of dollars in reserves that they could use if these are really necessities for the government that they need more money for. They have all kinds of property they could sell, including the fairgrounds, uh, or at least hundreds of acres of the, a hundred acres of the fairgrounds at the minimum, plus all kinds of blighted downtown property that uh, we're not getting sales taxes on, that isn't taxed, that's decreasing the tax base and blighting a block of downtown Columbia because they aren't putting it to its highest best use. So I'm I'm fed up. Enough's enough. If these government people can't figure out how to provide essential government services with the enormous amount of money and assets that they own, they need to resign and get someone in there that knows what they're doing. That's my opinion. <laughs> get someone in there that knows what they're doing. <laughs> Anybody who knows what they're doing is going to run for office. That's part of the problem, too, isn't it? But, you, well, with these kind of salaries, they all... Ten of them, all ten of them get over $90,000 a year. We have among the highest paid elected county officials in the state. Maybe I should run. Yeah. It wouldn't be as hard to find people to run for jobs that pay that well. <laughs> well, is there any tax out there that you've seen that, uh, what about the three-quarter percent tax for the uh, for the highways? Or, well, it's not really for the highways. It's transportation, infrastructure, whatever. You know, I need to sit down and really read through all that and what they worked out in the legislative session. I I was actually open to the idea of raising the gas tax at one point um, because it just so perfectly correlates to the use of the roads. And so it seemed the most uh, reasonable approach to me. But I I don't know enough about this uh, sales tax concept. Do you know that the highway trust fund that gets its money at the federal level from the sale of fuel that 25% of it goes to things that have nothing to do with highways. For instance, bike paths. It parks. It yeah. sounds like local Columbia, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it, though? Yeah. And it goes to... And then they complain, oh, the developers need to pay for the sewer stuff. Well, you shouldn't have misused taxpayer resources this whole time to let the sewers to get to the state that they're in right now. It's it's amazing how much money they take in. It's even more amazing how much money they waste. If and you the, look at a map of like downtown Columbia of how much is taxable and tax exempt because of government owning things, and this is the real estate that would be yielding the highest taxes, the best sales taxes. It's astonishing how much is government controlled and tax exempt and how much opportunity costs they have by thinking that their employees should be able to sit and work on the most valuable real estate in our town. And everybody else that has to pay for that has to hoof it and not be able to be on the highest um, valued real estate in town. It's infuriating. They think that we work for them. They work for us. And they need to be reminded of that. The public transportation is one of my pet peeves. I hate 
public transportation. It's a failed economic model, and it's been it has it started failing in the late fifties, and yeah. it and it continues to get worse. We more- should pass a thing that says uh, a law that says any elected official that wants to increase public transportation is required to use it because none of them use it. But I wonder mu- if any of them have ridden the bus ever. You know? But how much money at the federal, state, and local level is going to promote and continue to fund? A system that is failing, that is not only failing, has failed. You could use those resources. To fix sewers? To hire more uniformed police officers to keep us safer? For any plethora of reasons that are actually legitimate government functions. I agree. 874 The inimitable Jennifer Bukowski, attorney at law, with us. What does the sign say before I go to the phones? Gary. Outside your door. Gary, you see my notepad's blank today. <laughs> all right, let me go I'll grab it. I might have it. That's all right. I'll get a phone call in before you can get to it. George, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Knowledge Show. How are you? Good morning. I, I have never seen Ms. Bukowski. Is she as beautiful as she is intelligent? Uh, I, I would argue that she is. Uh, uh, when she, when she's in the studio, I don't have to look at Brian, and you have no idea how much easier it is on the uh, eyes. No, no, that's no comparison, Gary. Unfair, unfair. <laughs> You're right. Compared to a mud fence, Brian is... <laughs> no, no, I'm taking up for Brian. Don't, don't try and put him into the wrong spot there. But uh, Ms. Bukowski is absolutely right on the very point. Thank this you. morning's paper had uh, the proposed constitutional amendments and the taxes in there. I urge everyone to read that. No one who reads the uh, proposed taxes can by any means uh, see that they're really needed. Money is just being put into a fund that can be diverted to other things. Bike paths are one of the things that's going to come out of one of the proposed taxes, you mark my words. Uh, The other thing that uh, while we're talking about, while I'm talking about constitutional amendments, I urge everyone to uh, read through the proposed agricultural uh, guarantee. That is a disaster. And the current uh, explanation or close uh, example of that is the hog farm over in Callaway County. Once such an amendment is passed, the local residents will have absolutely no opportunity to defend their property. I don't know whether you've ever lived next to a hog farm, anywhere close, but I'm telling you, that's the worst. I love horses. I clean horse stalls by hand all day. I get sick driving by a cow, or I mean a uh, hog farm. Well, what comes we first? Need to the defeat, in my opinion, the agricultural amendment. And I'm a farmer. You know, I got a small 100-acre farm, and I'm dead set against that. All right, I, I think I have to disagree with you on that. I think it's better than uh, not having the bill. Uh, and I don't want to just pick on the hog farmers, but it, it occurs to me that. Uh, this protects farmers from animal rights activists and others, uh, and it does make uh, uh, um, it, it does have in it that you have to inv- uh, obey environmental regulations. So uh, you need to please read it more closely. That, that's uh, you know we can, I, I'm not going to debate here with you because I respect your opinions, but please read it more closely. I don't think we need uh, the way that bill is worded. The, the thing, example it cited is the one where it went after dog uh, breeders and limited them to a number of dogs. I will tell you from having been involved in uh, the dog business here in Missouri for several decades, I didn't disagree with that because there was so much abuse. Um, like the teacher who was found, I think, was up in Hallsville. Uh, her house caught on fire, and what they found was she had 100 dogs in her backyard breeding. And there was really nothing that could be done about it. And the dogs were in terrible shape. That's just a local example. Yeah, but I, see, my, here's where we differ, George. Dogs don't have rights. People do. Wait a minute. Do you know what the fastest growing section of the uh, University of California Law School is? Animal rights. But animals don't have rights. Uh, but, People have rights. Well, you and I agree to that. All right. But what I'm telling you is the law is changing, and we need to be careful that we don't provide a platform for it. All right. We need, I think, to educate voters most of all. George, thank you for the call. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, and I love Mrs. Bukowski's input. You need to get her on there more often. Oh. Wait a minute. I'm on here five, six days a week. She comes on for one hour a week, and it's...
Well, all right. <laughs> George, thanks for the call. I'm going to look into that farm bill stuff. That's some interesting points he brought up. All right. Listen, we've got some important messages. We're going to come back. Jennifer Bukowski is our guest. It is the Gary Nolan Show, the Zimmer Radio Network. This is the Gary Nolan Show. Shine the Eagle online, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm back with Jennifer Bukowski, attorney at law. We're talking about, uh, well, I guess we're talking about a couple of things here. One of them is, uh, geez, I just got a text. Me- How do you get a text message a message on your cell phone for sunglasses? I mean, it's like a total stranger has discovered my cell phone number. I gave it to him. Is that you? I thought you needed some some shades. I don't need shades. I'm always cool. <laughs> Uh, anyway, 874-9390-800-529-5572. Uh, if you've got a, uh, uh, an opinion on this uh, farm bill and you uh, want to voice it, we want to hear it. But I tend to believe that it's not a bad bill. Um, we'll find out. Also on taxes, uh, because uh, you're, you're not looking at any of these tax hikes as favorable that I can tell. I've just noticed a pattern of behavior. This one um, is an eighth cent sales tax to support the Central Missouri Event Center, county parks, and economic development. It's basically for no purpose whatsoever except for whatever they want to throw around money at, is what that summary says to me. And I think the Central Missouri Event Center shouldn't be owned by Boone County to begin with. Like, why do we have that? Why are we competing as a government with other like hotels and things like that that have event centers that they can rent out to people. We have a fair at it once a year. That's a huge asset that they own that if they go over run on their budget on the 911 palace they're building themselves or they need to do some economic development or whatever else, sell that and use that money for those purposes. But don't come taking more money out of our pockets out of the private sector and put it in the public one. It's so ineffective to do that because then if you keep the money in the private sector you grow wealth if you sink it into the public sector it's a it's just gone it's it's not going to develop the economy give you're, me a break you're starting to sound like me you know you know it's really I, really I'm starting if you. you're starting to scare I'm me here padawan learner gary <laughs> john welcome glad to have you on the gary nolan show how are you oh good morning gary and jennifer um on a previous occasion, I appreciate that you gave me the opportunity to point out that the trucks would be exempted from uh, the uh, three four cent sales tax. In fact, in preparation for this amendment on August 28, 2012, less than two years ago, the legislature exempted all trucks licensed over 54,000 pounds from paying a penny towards sales tax. So what? for the next 10 years, they won't pay anything. Oh, they don't the use the tax. roads up at all, though, do they? But <laughs> one thing I'd like to point out, it does not appear in the ballot language, but if you read the text of Amendment 7, it states that for the next 10 years, the trucking industry will be constitutionally protected from any increase in their fuel tax. So for the next 10 years, the 17-cent diesel tax, which is the, one of the lowest in the country, will be what they pay. So I suppose if you want to invest in the trucking industry or if you are involved in the trucking industry, you should uh, vote for this amendment. But uh, I'm not trying to influence anyone's opinion or tell people how to vote, but I merely offered this for informational purposes. But, John, as I understand it, trucks uh, have to pay a flat rate to come through Missouri no matter what? Well, there is an argument that the large trucks pay a heavy-use truck tax. It's 4%, which is considerably less than the sales tax, but it is levied only on the purchase of the vehicle. It does not apply if they buy a mud flap, a tire, a quarter oil, a taillight lens. It does not apply for, ma- it does not apply for maintenance, repairs, or operation of the vehicle. Certainly, the trucks do uh, have a tax burden. But that's not the issue. The issue is the increase in tax and the request 
that a three-quarter cent sales tax be burdened on all of the purchases in Missouri with the exemption of food and prescriptions, yet due to the legislative strength of the trucking industry, they, uh, the legislature has cleverly protected this industry from shouldering any of the burden. Zero, zilch, nada. They will not pay a penny of this tax if it is enacted. All right. John, appreciate the call. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Let's go to uh, Tom. Tom, welcome. Glad hey, to have Gary. you. Yes, sir. Uh, basically, the reason I'm calling is there was a gentleman that called a little bit ago about Amendment 1. Yeah. And you said you were for it, which I, uh, that's fine with me, but I, I don't think you really read uh, the amendment. I just went through the last two days looking at the amendment, and it's going to give special rights to large corporations, which I know that you're for large corporations, but actually they won't have any stipulations against them. They can do basically whatever they want. And then more foreign groups like China or France, whoever wants to come in and buy Missouri lands, they can buy as much as they want. Why right should we say, wait, 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 wait. You're making it sound like if somebody comes in and buys land in Missouri from a foreign country, they should have no right. Why should we be stopping them from doing that? I'm not saying they shouldn't have any rights. I'm just saying that they should not be able to do whatever they want. There won't be any regulations against them at all. Well, yes, there will. This new amendment. No, not with this new amendment. No, they would have have jurisdiction over the property. I mean, there's in rem jurisdiction for the courts over property that's in, even if the corporation is outside the country, they'd have jurisdiction over regulating the property. Right. That that part would be true. And they have to abide. It says that they have to abide by environmental laws. There's only, on the environmental laws, there's only two laws that are on the books, and that's basically just for water. So, so if they abide by so the So what are you afraid, what are you afraid or, they're going to do? What are you afraid they're going to do, John, uh, Tom? Well, the biz- biggest thing that I'm afraid that they're going to do is we just, the, the people that live around these large corporations or whatever, when they do put these units in, I'm talking about like the hog farm or anything like that, the people around those areas will not have any rights to be able to do anything against them. Well, you, smell, you, you make order, it sound. Thing that's a, you, well, first off, only, first off, you, you make it sound as though suddenly Missouri is going to be the king of hog farms, and they're going to be on every other street corner. And I don't believe that's going to be the case. Well, look at Iowa. If you look at Iowa, that's that's basically what's happened there. I mean, I, all I'm asking you to do, Gary, is take a look and do a little bit of research before you say, yeah, this is what I think. Uh, I, I did do a little bit of research, and, and it looks as though they have to abide by environmental laws and that the overall net is a gain for farmers here. But I will, I've got, uh, I know a guy that uh, I can bring on the program and we'll kind of kick it around with him, and then I'll seal my deal on my opinion one way or the other because you've raised some interesting questions. Hey, I appreciate it, Gary. Just, just take a look at it. I think you'll... It'll open your mind up a little bit. I appreciate it, though. Thank All you right. very much. Tom, thank you. Glad to have you on the Gary mm-hmm. Nolan Show. Brian, do I have time or am I... Uh, yeah, yeah, you have uh, two minutes. All right, then I can go to John. John, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm doing the, well. Uh, the uh, previous caller that was talking about the trucks being exempted from the, from the, sales, or from the additional fuel tax, not only are the trucks exempted far, from it, so is everybody that drives a car. It's not specifically that trucks won't pay, you know, that they're specifically exempt from that sales tax. They just put a provision in there that they couldn't raise the fuel tax, not specifically the diesel tax. They put in that they could not raise the fuel tax, gas, diesel, any type of motor fuel that cannot be raised for 10 years. All they did was kind of cover their stuff on that to, uh um, you know, so that they can't just throw another tax in on top of this tax. And trucks play trucks pay a flat rate so much per state for so many miles that they drive through the state, whether they buy the fuel to cover it or not. Uh, if you operate in that state, you have to pay fuel tax in that state. Uh, if you buy enough fuel to cover that tax, then, you know, you're – you're okay, but if you don't buy enough fuel to cover the, the use tax in that state, you still have to pay it. Yeah, that was what I was trying to talk to the other caller about. Uh, the system is a complete screwball mess, but it's what you'd expect if the government runs it. John, I appreciate... It's, it's government. Yeah, it's government. It, what did yeah. I say? Did I say something different? I thought I no, said... that's what you said. I was yeah. disagreeing with you. It's government. All right, John, thank you for the call. Thanks. 
Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Now, I argue you have to get rid of that. You cannot pass the sales tax. Frankly, I think if we weren't wasting money, and if this, and it, it's not just the wasting of the money that we have now, it's the projects that they're projecting they'll fund yeah, with and this money. Yeah, maintain and employ people to oversee forever that our children are going to have to be paying for. It's such a burden on them. I'm so sick of it. It's every time you turn around, somebody is is trying to reach into your pocket and you take more of your money. I'll and tell I'm, you why they do it, too. All right. You got the Gary Nolan Show. Jennifer Bukowski is our guest on the Zimmer Radio Network. This is the Gary Nolan Show. It's not your grandpa's talk station. Hot talk at Breaking News 93.9. The Eagle. Welcome. It is 35 minutes after the hour. Jennifer Bukowski, attorney at law, joins us on the Gary Nolan Show. We've been talking about taxes and the farm bill. We've heard uh, arguments, I guess, on both sides. Uh, we will bring, uh, I will bring somebody on board to talk about the farm bill. We'll get into it in much greater detail, and we'll take your phone calls and chat about it. There is a piece by uh, Michael Boskin in the, uh, in the Wall Street Journal. He is uh, an economics professor at Stanford University. He's a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, and he's uh, written a piece about how uh, the government is whittling away our private property rights. He says, nine years ago, the Supreme Court gutted the Constitution's public use restriction on eminent domain with the Kelo decision. In 2009, President Obama trampled the legal rights of secured Chrysler bondholders to transfer billions of dollars to the unions. He says the Environmental Protection Agency issues 1,500 wetlands compliance orders annually to halt land use. The biggest future threat, he says, will be the fruits of one's labor. The unfunded liabilities of Social Security and Medicare are now several times the national debt. The unfunded liabilities of state and local governments for pensions and other benefits are in the trillions and mounting. The panoply of government programs nonetheless continues to expand. The result, according to the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, Federal spending will reach 36% of GDP in a generation. This implies that taxes will have to double from the current near-historic average, 18% of GDP. All federal taxes will increase on income, capital gains, dividends, corporate earnings, employer and employee benefits. And left unchecked, many middle-income earners eventually will face a marginal tax rate of 70% or higher. Yeah, they're not trying to help the middle class. They're trying to make it them into the dependent class is what they're doing. You can't tax people at that rate. You cannot tax people at 70%. Yeah, who's going to want to work for that? Why should I work extra Why hard? Why should I work through, what, September before I get to take a dime for myself? Yeah. You work for the government until September, and then finally the rest of the year, that money goes to you. I As it is, we I have to work through... June 30th before the money goes to me. You know, I listen to uh, to people on the left, and, and I doubt that any of them have the courage to call and, and, uh, and, and talk about this, but it really is something they need to think about. If we have a 17-plus, almost $18 trillion debt, that's not deficit. And let me explain something and make this clear, and I've done this before. If the deficit is reduced, the debt is is increased in other words if they if they had a hundred billion dollar deficit and they reduced it to a fifty billion dollar deficit the debt would go up by fifty billion dollars wait i'm not following you. all right every year we run a deficit every year yeah, we, we spend take in more than we take in right so if the deficit is a hundred billion dollars and they reduce it to fifty billion dollars you're still that fifty billion dollars. Yeah, you're still going into more debt. You're, you're going. You need deep. to wipe not only get rid of the deficit, but start paying off the debt, and we're nowhere near doing that. Right, and economists have looked at Social Security and Medicare and all of those social programs and military spending. Yes, and they say that uh, we are headed for a debt 
of over one hundred trillion dollars. I can't even like conceptualize how much money that is. It doesn't. That's the problem. People can't conceptualize the size of the debt. They don't, in their minds, see the the enormity of it because it's just words. When you say, uh, you know, we used to talk about being in debt by billions of dollars. And, and the old adage uh, around Washington, D.C. was a million here, a millionaire. Pretty soon you're talking about some real money. Millions of dollars in debt is infinitesimal. Yeah. <laughs> Millions means nothing. Not even to the county government, apparently. Yeah. So at some point, people on the left need to come up with some solutions. I mean, people on the right, and libertarians, we've got some solutions, and they all involve cutting back on spending everywhere. Well, maybe if something happened like with Ireland, they took money out of all the people's savings accounts, like pension accounts, to pay off their debt so that they didn't default or whatever. And that penalized everyone that had saved their money during their lifetime. But that's the kind of stuff we're looking at having to do. Like, the government's got so little respect for property rights... They're going to come after what little things you have, even if you are in the middle class. And maybe then they'll see it. But hopefully we don't get that far. But. Well, I don't see how we not be, how we don't get that far because people don't seem to be waking up to this. And I've tried for years to find ways to make people understand the size and scope of the debt and what a problem it is. And granted, people on the right are more inclined to at least reduce spending. But they're not, I think, inclined to reduce it enough. But people on the left are the ones that baffle me because they're not looking to reduce spending. They think we can continue with Social Security. They see, yeah, they see government <clears throat> spending as a solution to problems, like spend more to create jobs. I, I, I'm i so irritated every time they talk about we need to get back to creating jobs in the government. The government doesn't create jobs. A government job is a liability for me and my children to have to support. You are not creating any kind of wealth. We're doing it by creating government jobs. Yeah, the only thing the government can do in terms of job creation is get out of its way. Yeah, reduce the size of government, privatize things. Let's just start cutting stuff so that we can have something that we can afford that provides essential services and get out of debt so that we don't collapse. So I don't want to set a trap. I don't want anybody to think that I'm looking for someone to chew out. But I am curious if there is a liberal with a solution for this debt you're 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 almost at 18 trillion projection is for a hundred trillion and i want to know <clears throat> if there is a solution from the progressives for this enormous debt what i think is going on in washington is they're ignoring it it's not that people uh, the progressives in washington dc don't see it coming and 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 uh, they're caught off guard they see it coming but I don't think they want to deal with it. How how much would it help to r raise the retirement age to 70 or something like with that? Well, if you look at the, the at the numbers, when Social Security was originally uh, uh, passed, the 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 age at which you were able to collect was beyond the age most people lived. Yeah, now people are living way beyond 62 and a half years old. Uh, you'd have to raise this thing up to like 85. Uh, years old, and I think people but people that, can't work till they're eighty five. That's true, and people would but look they at they can till they're seventy. Well, the Those people, you know, the the uh, initially the uh, the the tax for Social Security was around two percent. Right now, it's around thirteen percent, and there is no concrete law. There is no guarantee. That you're going to get anything. That you're going to get anything. Yeah. Congress can rewrite it just like that. They can cancel it just like that. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's it's not a right. So That might not be a bad thing because we might be backed into a corner where we have to well, I don't make think some you, troubling decisions about do we want to have a country or collapse or do we want to cut some of these entitlements. Yeah, I think there is a way out of it, but it involves... Uh, phasing out the entitlements before the, the heaviest hit. And the heaviest hit is upon us. It is the baby boomers who are about to retire that are going to suck up the most amount of cash because there's so many of us. You know, I'm at the very tail end of the baby boom thing. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm closer to the middle, but I wouldn't admit that. Anyway, <laughs> but, the, but the point is that as we baby boomers go through this, there are fewer and fewer Americans who are working to pay into it.
We need to make you baby boomers be greeters at Walmart until you're 90 years <laughs> until old. Until we're or 90 something. years old, thank you. <laughs> but, but, you know, and there's a compounding problem here, and that is the most of the jobs that we're seeing get created are part time jobs. They're not paying very well. Right. So, you know, Obamacare. So which, people can't save up for their retirement. So to I'm, support themselves. So if there's no Social Security, what's going to happen to all these people? So I would like to hear from a brave and courageous progressive, some Democrat out there right now who's listening to me. And I promise you this is no trap. I have no intention of ripping you apart. I just want to know how you would solve the problem. 874-9390, 800-529-5572. All they'll do is blame Republicans and rich well, people. I, you know, I, there's got to be in their mind a solution, or they have to believe in their mind there is really no problem. They either have to believe there's no problem and we're fine, or they have to believe th that you know they're they've got the solution. Yeah, you can. Ev you can't have it both Ryan ways. says you can evade reality, but you can't evade the consequences of evading reality. So I'm I'm uh, opening up the phones. I encourage you to call if you're a progressive, if you're a liberal, if you're if you call yourself a liberal, progressive, uh, Democrat. What is your solution? How do we dig ourselves out from under without stabbing ourselves in the heart? And and that's the secret here because you. You can't burden people so much that they leave the country yeah, with their wealth. Stop working. You got the Gary Nolan Show and uh, Jennifer Bukowski, our guest on the Zimmer Radio Network. This is the Gary Nolan Show. Mid Missouri's Hot Talk 93.9, The Eagle. Fifty minutes after the hour. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be with you. Jennifer Bukowski joins us, attorney at law. Um, we're talking about the national debt, which is uh, almost eighteen trillion, projected to go uh, in excess of one hundred trillion dollars. <clears throat> and I've offered up an uh, an opportunity, really, for some progressive to call up with their solution for the national debt. For your if you've got an idea how to handle this, because <clears throat> one of two things is going on. Either you think there's a solution, or you don't think there's a problem. Yeah, it's like they're just holding their hands on their ears and saying, no, 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 I can't hear yeah. you, I can't hear you. So I'm, And I'm not trying to rip anybody apart. I'm just trying to find out if they have an idea, if they're worried about it, if they're even thinking about it. How they how they think that this Maybe problem... Maybe a lot of them think it's not their problem because they don't pay any taxes now to begin with. And I see now that's a cheap shot. There are lots of lots of liberals who pay taxes. Okay, maybe they don't. <laughs> Bev, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. How are you? I'm doing great, and I, your program today has just been awesome, all of it. Um, I want, I'm, when you get that liberal progressive on, I want you to ask them to explain how the impact of this illegal invasion is going to be on our tax dollars, because if we have a $100 trillion you know, projected debt, what is going to happen when all these illegals are soaking up the current money that, according to our government, we don't have. So who? how does this work out? Why isn't every American who understands what you guys are talking about today, why aren't they screaming at their their congressmen saying, not only do we not want our tax dollars going to fund the needs of these illegal immigrants, who really burns me that they can get on an airplane without any kind of papers, uh, why, why isn't this country in an uproar about what this is doing to our tax dollars because we don't have this money to spend. It's not like we're a rich uncle who can afford to give away money. We don't have the money today, and by what you guys have been saying this morning, we sure aren't going to have it in the future, yet we're going to have hundreds of thousands of these illegal immigrants in our country today. And so when you get that liberal on, please have them explain to me how this country is going to sustain this kind of cost to my tax dollars. All right. Well, let me let me just uh, make a couple of points here about um, most liberals. 
Most liberals want the same things we all want. Most of them want to live in a peaceful nation. They want a clean environment. Uh, they want economic opportunities for people. Our differences aren't in our goals. Our differences are, for the most part, and I'm just talking about the everyday liberal progressive Democrat, our differences are in how we achieve it. And so I don't want to I don't want to ridicule a liberal or a progressive. I don't want to rip them apart. I just want to know if they but, think there's a problem and if yeah, they, they do. Yeah, I think they believe that they want to do good for people with their social programs and end up trapping people into lives of poverty. Those are meant in their heart to help those poor people. They, they don't know that it hurts them. I, you know, I, I, I understand that, and I'm not demonizing liberals. But you have to be able, I think you have to be able as a responsible person to explain how are you going to pay for the programs you support, whether that's your home budget, your business budget, or coming to Uncle Sam and saying, gee, bail me out. So it's not that we're unkind or, or that they are misguided. I, I want to honestly know how they think this country is going to pay for these things. We all want these children to have good lives and to be safe and not to have scabies and tuberculosis, but the reality is different. And you have to deal with the reality, not yeah. just the, the wonderful, just... oh, it makes me feel good. Yep, you're, you got that right. All right, Thank appreciate you. I Thanks. really enjoyed your program. Bye-bye. Thanks, Beverly. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Uh, let's see. Dwayne says, uh, Gary, on farming since the 1950s until 2014, the Conservation Department and these universities have sucked up thousands and thousands of acres around the United States uh, that they, they are not getting on. any taxes or nothing yeah. for. That is a substantial amount of money that the government is losing out on. Uh, he goes on to say, I am not saying tax the hell out of the land if it was privately owned, but farmers could make more use of it than the government going back to the taxes question but that doesn't that doesn't solve the national debt and i i think our progressive friends who have big hearts but but don't really quite grasp the economics of it are being used by the democrats that hold office i think the the democrats that hold office know better they know that we're heading for trouble but they don't want to have to announce it. They don't because want to they have want to stay in power. Right. Like if they start coming up with real solutions that are going to cut things and, and they won't be reelected because the people are depend they've created a dependent class that depends on all these entitlements. And in order to stay in power, which they want to do, they can't attack any entitlements. It's uh, it's a shame they're being so dishonest. Um, it, because ultimately, yeah, and then they just we'll, finger point and say it's all a Republicans' fault. Or... And if they raise taxes enough, and you've seen this, it's going on right now. Uh, corporations will find other countries, and what they'll do is they'll either move their headquarters or they'll allow themselves to be purchased by uh, companies like companies in other countries, so they can eliminate that the, the largest uh, uh, corporate tax rate in the world. And when they go. The people that run those companies will go. The money will go. And we should be doing the exact opposite. Right now, we're in a race for brain talent. We need to, part of immigration reform that we need is to make it easier for the super smart, educated, talented people to come here and build their lives here and create wealth here. Right now, we're making it really hard for those people to get over here, for companies to hire that talent. Can you imagine the, the employment opportunities that would arise if we got rid of the corporate income tax? You know, I mean, just think about this. Every corporation in the world would want to be here. If they were here, their jobs would be here. Right. And it's double taxing income oh, absolutely. right now. I mean, so it, it doesn't make that much sense because I don't know how much the corporate income tax, how much does it raise the revenue anyway? Well, it, it, anybody who understands the economics of corporate taxes know that they simply are overhead to a corporation. And how does an over, how does overhead get, get paid for in a corporation? You increase the cost of your goods and services to cover the... And you aren't able to hire as many people. Right. You aren't able to grow as fast. But like, it, yeah, you just see the money of, in the people that are talented at building businesses and creating wealth and creating jobs. If you left more of that money with those people, how more robust the economy could be? I don't know. Because I, if you give it to the government, they just waste it. Yep. Absolutely. They just waste it. Brian, do I have time to go back? 
No, we don't. No, unfortunately. I'm out of time. Only uh, 10 seconds. Only 10 seconds? 10 yeah. seconds. That seems so unfair. It's a quick hour. Jennifer Bukowski, thank you for being with us this, mor- this, this morning. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on board. Uh, all right, tomorrow is Frost Your Buns Friday, so whatever's on your mind, we'll discuss it. Chance for you to blow off a little steam, cover topics we didn't get to. And Glenn Beck is next. Whatever it is in life that you want, go out and get it. Don't wait for the government to drop it in your lap. You make it happen. You seize the day. Carpe diem. Gwen, baby. Honey. I'm coming home.